Hello. Okay. Hi. Most of you know that I'm a mother of autistic boy. He's 15 years old now. Most of you also know his name is David. So why we are explaining understanding the family, or why we are explaining what the family is going through, not to feel sorry for them or to say any, um, have a feeling for them, no. It's just to understand how they feel and how we can support them in the right way, not to feel sorry for them, okay? Uh, that's what we are aiming for, is to create a welcoming and inclusive environment through all the church activity and within our church community. Not only th uh, during the Sunday class, like once he came in, we, we just handle him in the 45 minutes, and then once he's out, nobody's willing to talk to him. None of the kids are willing to play with him. No one is willing to say hi, or what are you doing, or even to speak to the mom. Like some of the special needs family, they will leave right away once they are done, because they don't, no one is talking and they are looking. They are trying to focus on the kids. So that's our aim, is to create a welcome and inclusive environment, just to try to include them. Because if they, I will explain to you later, if they are depressed enough, they, you will never see them in the church again. Okay, now we are trying to understand the grief cycle. Like once the parents or the family will get to know that they kids have signs of a problem. Like when you will start the first thing of um, trying to find out what's wrong, why he's not talking, why he's not pointing, why he's screaming a lot, why he's crying a lot. So you start to check with the therapist and to go to start with the, the first checkup with the doctors and then once you realize there is a problem, he is not going to develop normally like any, not normally like healthy like any other child. So then you will start through different stages, different feelings, and I will explain it to you now. So the first stage is denial. Once you will get to know like my son has a problem and um, he is not pointing, I I'm saying this signs because this is the first thing I notice about David, he is not pointing, he is crying a lot. He is not talking. He didn't say mama or baba till 18 months. So we start, the first thing I did is was the hearing test, test. So once we get to know he hear very well and he, so it's it looks like he is having a problem. So the first thing is the denial problem. Like, no, 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 he doesn't have anything. He is fine, he will be fine. So the parents will aim, what they will try to do. I will go to different um, uh, professionals to, just to find someone, like he will tell me, no, no, he doesn't have any problem, he will be fine. Like I'm looking for this to this doctor, that he will tell me he will develop normally, don't worry, like his father was not talking till three years, or whatever. So in the denial stages, they try, stage, they try to find someone who will tell them there is no problem. And you will find the mom if you will come and tell her in the church, like if you will come and tell her he is active or whatever, she will tell you, no, my son is fine or she will be very sensitive. Don't talk about his, he's not special needs, don't label him. So she's in the denial stage, and you have to understand that. Your job is not to tell her no, you have to accept him, it's not our job, because it's, it's, it's beyond worse, you cannot do that. It's something, she has to go through it, and it takes time, okay? So listen with acceptance, you have to listen to her, whatever she will say. Whatever she is believing about her son, if she said he's normal, yeah, that's fine, it's okay. You will focus on the, the good thing or the thing that the child can do, accept whatever she is saying, and don't try to convince her with what you believe in your mind, and what do you think, no, she, he has a problem. I had um, uh, one case in, in Dubai, one mom, and I noticed that in the church, I noticed the boy is having a behavior. And I want to help her because I was having a good experience with David. So I was approaching her, like I say, hi, how are you? Um, he's, he's, he's having an issues. My son is autistic too. She looked at me and she said, who told you my son is autistic? And she refused to talk to me because I made the wrong approach. Yes, I want to help her, but I should not go and tell her, your son is autistic or my son is autistic. I want to help. Maybe she doesn't, she doesn't want to speak about it because and she has the right, she, what she's going through is too much, so I have to respect that. So I said, I'm sorry, I didn't mean it. If you need any help, just let me know. I left my number, but this mom never talked to me. If she will see me in the church, she will go the different way, because I, I cut the relationship 
relationship from the beginning. Okay. So the second stage, once she knows and she he's 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 now five and he still he cannot talk. So for sure I have a problem. For sure he has an issue. Or the doctor has confirmed he's autistic, mild or severe or or uh, moderate. So she will start the anger stage. She will be very angry. Angry on God, angry on, on herself, angry on the community, angry. And she will take her anger on the, um, on the people around her, including the church, the, the servant. She, you will find the mom, if you will tell her anything, she will verbally or non-verbally get her anger on you. And, you, and she will not focus on the positive approach for her child. She is in the anger stage. Like she is not accepting the idea he has a, special, he has a problem and how can I help him? But she is in the anger stage. This is how we are, we are saying that she may be direct her anger on the, on the doctors, on the professionals, on the therapists. She will fight with everyone. She will fight with you. If you'll do anything wrong, if you'll say anything about her, she will be non-verbally or verbally. What we should do in this stage, how as a church, as a servant, we support that? We should open our hearts. Like, don't take it personally. She's not angry because of you or because what you have done or because you didn't take care of him. No, she's angry because what she's going through. So respect what she's going through and try to support her as much as you can. Okay? And try to focus on the child abilities. If you... If you focus on the child ability, then you will be able to encourage her to come over it, okay? The third stage is bargaining. Bargaining is where the, the, the mom, okay, he has a problem. I, I have passed the anger. Now I want to get out of this problem. I want to solve it. I want to get it done. So what she will do, she will try everything she can. She will be very committed to every professional, every uh, new treatment, every research. And, and she will do her best to try to overcome the problem. This stage is, is what she's doing here is right, but what she's expecting is wrong. Like she is doing everything she can. She's committed for her son's progress, which is good. But she was, she's expecting 100% result, which is not the truth. It's not the case. It will not happen. But in this stage, she, like I was, um, I, when I tried, I tried everything with David, nothing I didn't try, everything. So including diet, nutrition, stem cells, therapy, everything. So when I started the DAN protocol, which is defeat autism now, it's a specific, um, specific diet and nutrition and supplements and schedule, and I was doing with my whole heart. So I was expecting once we are done with the course, he will be fine, he will talk, he will be normal, he will go to school. I was expecting that, but that's wrong. What I have done is right, but what I'm, I'm expecting is wrong. You know? So any, she will always say in mind, like I have to try hard. Any problem can be overcome if I try hard enough. Okay. So parents may seem to be overly committed work with a great determination to certain goals with specific folks. What we should do as a servant and what we should, how we should support, if you will see her, I have tried this new thing, I'm doing that, I'm doing that. What you should do, appreciate their efforts and support them. This is the third stage. This is the fourth stage, depression and discouragement. When she tries everything and she did her best and the outcome is not as what she was expecting, like if I tried that new treatment and there is n the overcome is not 100% and I'm still, I didn't come over the problem, here will come the depression, the disencouragement, and she maybe she will stop everything. What is the use? I have, I have done it till the end and I didn't see what I want. I had one family in Dubai. She has two, uh, two girls. She is in, she will, she will never come out from, from the house with the two girls. They didn't see anyone. They, no one is allowed to visit them. They are not visiting anyone. And even I tried to visit her, no, the kids are very sensitive. Even they are, both of them are CPs and they are in the wheelchair. They don't want the mom to come to the church, attend the mass. 
uh, using the wheelchair. No, don't take us to the church on the wheelchair. You have to carry us. And they are, they are big. So it's very tiring for the mom to come and the dad. The mom is carrying one girl and the dad is carrying another girl. And they're sitting. They finish the mass. They take the Holy Communion. They leave in one second. If you are lucky, you can talk to her one minute. And she is not the kid because they understand very well the, 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 what, I'm, what I'm understanding. The kids themselves, they are in the depression, deep depression. They refuse. I have seen same cases, different. They come to church. They attend activity on the wheelchair. They are happy. They are fine. So if the family, this is, I call it, the most important stage. If we left the family alone in the depression stage where they don't accept the, the child, they don't, they don't understand that he can do anything the other kids can do, you will, you will not see them in the church again. And that will be the, not only the parents, the family, the, the kids, everyone will be depressed. And they will refuse to communicate with the community. And it will be harder to take them out of this again. So this is the most important stage where they need the support from everyone. Call, call them, ask why you didn't come, what's wrong. Try to be helpful, but carefully. Because in their mind, there, there is no use of anything. They will start drop even to go out. This lady, the one I was telling you about it, even her family are not allowed to visit her. The sister, the brothers, no one. She's not attending any family activity. So. what we can do to help. This is the time when parents need the most support from everyone around them. The church role is very, very important. Why I'm saying the church? One day, I was so tired from Sunday class. Like, David will go, and the servant are giving me a very hard time. I used to go to the mass, going home, I'm crying. I don't want to go again. It's enough. They are looking. He's, because David was very noisy, moving making things with his hands, and everyone is looking at me. I'm sitting on the back side. Even that is not enough. And when I'm going home, I told Musa, no, I don't want to go again. What's the use? He's not learning anything, and he's not listening. We are just taking two, year, two hours of, of deep looking at us, and we are suffering. What is the use? I will not go again. But Musa insists, my husband, he insists that we have to attend. He said, if we will not attend the church, every one of us will stay at home. Because you will not sit with David, with David at home alone. So all of us will not go. It will affect Daniel. It will affect me. It will affect you. So we will be isolating ourselves from the church. So the, the role of the church is very important. Like when you look too much to the child, when you judge the mom. Like one day, one lady, she came and she told me, you don't know how, told him, Sharfat Rabbi? But she doesn't know that he has a problem, Yani. It's not a problem of in, in tarbiya, of discipline. He, it's a problem that he has a problem. Like the video you have seen about the child, the autistic boy, this is exactly how David feels. Because David, he has sensory problem. You will find him a lot blocking his ear because it's really, really painful to him. This is the, 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 the nice one, OK? This is when the parents know that, OK, he has a problem. They understand the problem, and they acknowledge it. Like, OK, I will deal with it. In this stage, the parents are also committed to try everything and do their best to, with therapies, with everything. But they know the outcome. They know what I'm getting out of it. Like, for example, if I'm reading about new treatment, and I will search about the positive or the, the good uh, uh, outcome out of it. If I, if I find the percent is 5%, that's fine. I will try. I will go for it. 5% is, 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 is an amazing, especially with autism. So if, if there is no positive uh, um, feedback or uh, result, but there is no negative, also I will try. Like if it, it didn't confirm a good benefit for the child, I will try since it doesn't have a negative or side, uh, side effect, OK? So they start to focus on the process of maximizing the child potential and how to help him to achieve his goals. Parents make constructive adjustment in their lifestyle. In this stage, the parents, you will find them like they will start to adjust their outing. 
Like, I will not go to the place David, will, he will not be happy. I will not go shopping. I will not go malls. We will not go, uh, we will not go, um, I will focus more where he is happy. He can be himself, like the beach or open areas or whatever he is enjoying. So they start to make it in the right way. And they start to speak openly and discuss their ch uh, child case and share their experience. So they will, st if you will ask her, what's the problem? Yeah, he has so on and so on. I, we did that if you want, if you, if you need my help. So this is the perfect stage where you can, they can speak openly and you can discuss with them and even you can involve them in the service. Once you find a parent who's talking openly, okay, why you don't come and join us and be part of the service? Okay, now this is things to keep in mind, like to just remember some points that's very important. It's, it doesn't mean that the parents in the in understanding or acknowledgement stage that they will never go to the denial or anger or they go in the same, in the five stages five times a week. So they can go from this one to this one and then, so it's, it's, it's changing up to the mood and up to the, the situation, for example, if the mother have a very difficult night in the hospital or she had a very difficult meeting in the school and they give her left and right and she will go home. She will go again to the anger mood, like why, why me? Why did I have to go through all of that? And some kids will behave very badly. This is very important, like very bad in the presence of their parents or one of the parents. Like if you will ask the mom, okay, we, are, we will go for the outing. Can you come be with us so you can help him? She, they used to ask me a lot, can you come to be with David? I cannot be with David because he will behave the worst when I'm there. Not because I don't want to help my son, because it will not help him. It will make it worse. So if the parents say, I cannot be with him, it doesn't mean she doesn't want to help. It means like it's not the best scenario. Because the kids, like David, will behave better if he's with a servant than with me. Is if he is with a stranger. Okay. Being involved with the family should not mean it, it is your responsibility to, to help them to move from a stage to another. Like if you'll find the mom, she's in the denial or you are, now you understand the, the, the meaning or the labels, it's not our job to push her. It, you have to accept your child or to um, accept him. No, it's not our job because it really, really takes long time. It's not easy. It's long process. So we just have to support, listen, and support. That's it. It is not recommended to late. Ah, this is very important. It's not recommended to use these labels. Like you, if you will have a discussion, if she open her heart and start to talk to you, and um, you build, you start to build the relationship, and then you know you are in the, the denial stage. Maybe you are in the anger stage. So you should not use that these labels. It's for you to understand and support them. Uh, be sensitive to the sibling of a special need child, as sometimes they are, are overstressed. Like, be careful if you have a child in your class and you know that his brother is, 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 is autistic. You have to be very careful with them. Not be very careful, like, treat him different, but give extra, extra step. Like, walk the extra mile to help him. If you, in case you find him shy, if you find him um, overloaded, or if you find him stressed, so you know that because the siblings are, are loaded the same as the mom and dad because they help, they help a lot. Like Daniel is my right hand with David. He will take care of him a lot. Okay. Always be welcoming for a special need child and his family if they need to attend any church activity and do your best to accommodate their needs. This is very, very important. Like if you have an activity and for any reason you found a uh, special need child with his family, they came and they won't attend, don't show the face, please. We have seen it a lot. Don't show the face like he's not welcome. You please take him and go home. We cannot handle him. Because it's really, really painful. Like one day um, uh, in this stage where I was not sending David to Sunday uh, class at all because the teacher was not welcoming at all. So one of the servants, he is new to the class and he called me, why you're not coming? Why he's not attending? He used to attend before. I said, it's, it's very difficult and I don't want to add load to the servant. They, they are not happy to help him. So it's fine. I'm, I'm okay. No, no, no. Bring him. Bring him. I said, it's okay. Fine. 
And then he told me there is a trip, and David loves the trips, field trip. He loves to go on the bus. He loves to be with the kids. He loves it. He enjoyed it. He will, I know he will never do anything, but I didn't send him. So she, he called me, and he said, please send him. I said, it's okay. You will take care of him. Yes, I will take care of him. Please bring him. I said, fine. So in the morning, I was going to the church, and the two servants are there. And they are line, lining the kids up. And once she, she saw me with David, I have seen the face like, why she's here? And she was doing like that. And I said, oh, okay, I'm leaving. And she said, no, 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 it's okay, it's okay. What's his name? I, I, she doesn't even know his name. So I told, give her her name. And then I want to take David and go, but because I already explained to him that just to, from yesterday, tomorrow you are going on a field trip. Tomorrow you will be in the bus. Do your best. Behave right. And, and he is very excited. So now I cannot take him and go from the church because it will cause more screaming and crying and they, they will get more, I will get more attention from everyone around. So I don't know what, if I, I have to go or, or leave, but she's not welcoming at all. And then the last thing when they are going on the bus, she doesn't want him to go on the bus. She was blocking him like, holding the door so he cannot cannot go in. So he was he was going to cry and then I cried. I told you cannot do that. He's same like any other child. Like why you are allowing everyone except my son? What's wrong with him? So be always welcoming. And 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 I even I cannot take him that day I called Moose. I said please go fast to the park because they are not welcoming him and you have to be with him. Okay? So if, if just in case you see them coming, be welcome. Try to do one extra step will do, be, make a big difference. Like in the same, I will tell another story. One of the, in Dubai, we, I, my best friend, she was having a child. He is, uh, she is CP and she's in the wheelchair. So in the church, they used to sit on the floor. But because she, is, she cannot sit, so the mom used to sit next to her. And this is bothering the girl a lot. Like, why only me sitting next? And my mom is sitting next to me. And, and then, OK, we said she will sit on the chair, small chair. And the other kids are sitting on the floor. Till the, one of the servants, she came to me, and she, because she knows I'm, I'm their friend. And she, she told me, Salwa, I'm thinking to make a chair, like to support Sherry body from around. So she can sit on the floor without her mom. And, and she will enjoy like any other, any other of the kids. And, and she made it. Within one week and the next Sunday class, she got the chair and she can sit with all the kids. And Sherry, she was so happy. Like, she was like, I'm like them. So just a small thing can make a big difference in their life, can affect them very well. Never give a negative feedback about their child behavior during the activity and try to focus on the good thing he did. Like when they pick up the kids, don't say um, what he did. And she will, if she will ask, he did well. He smiled to me to, today. He sit for 10 minutes. Even if he sit only for five minutes and 40 minutes, he was moving around. Tell her that he sit for 10 minutes. Tell her that he smiled, that he looked in your eyes. One day I was picking David, and I was asking the teacher what he did. She told me, say what he didn't do. But then I was saying, okay, I know, but <laughs> so, so don't start with the negative feedback, okay? Just give, this, give the good things first. Follow up and visitation call are much appreciated with the parents of a special needs child. Why? Because they feel that they are not welcomed. Like you will find them, and for me, for myself, I will not give David or let David participate in anything unless I know the parent, the servant are welcoming him. Because he's my son, he's so precious to me. If you don't understand, if you don't, if you don't appreciate him, I will never let him be with you. So if, if, if follow, follow up calls or visiting calls, or if you can call them, make sure that they understand that you welcome them in the class. Encourage other kids to interact with the child and explain to, him, to them his needs and why he is different. This is very important so you can speak to the, to, the, to the other kids around him so he can have friends. 
it is better if one of the servants dedicate himself during the, this is do and don't list, like during the, because I know most of you has a special need child in the class, mild, not, uh, not uh, severe, so you can handle them, I believe you can handle them, just a, just a bit of love and extra step you will be able to handle, they are not very difficult. So uh, just encourage them to, the other kids, to be nice to them. I have seen kids, they are so mean to the special needs child kids. I have seen it so many times. They will make exactly what make them angry or what trigger their behavior. Like he knows if I do this sound, this boy will scream or he will start to flap his hands. He will do the sound. So if we teach them, if we change the culture, like he is part of the class, and you have to support him and be nice to him. You can be his friend, so encourage them. That's why we say don't exclude them from any activity. If the child see the teacher, she's excluding the, the special need child from the activity, he will know I can exclude him as well. If all of them are sitting in a circle and he is sitting behind the circle or outside of the circle, so he will get the message. He is not part of the group. Yeah, most of them, they have the hyperactivity. So what, that's why I'm saying, if he sit for 10 minutes, then you rewarded him. You rewarded him with something that he like, and he can move a bit. He can, most of the autistic child, they have hyperactive. They cannot sit for so long. Like David, now he's sitting, but back um, 10 years back, he would never sit. So you have to understand, you can give him something in his hand. You can give him any special toy, but once you you once he sit for ten minutes, that's my goal to teach him sit for ten minutes and then get a break and move for some time. Yes, this is this is called an ABA principle, and we will go through it in the in the next. Uh, For example, I have this case. I have Raphael, he's normal, and I have David, he's a special needs, and Rafa's so smart. So David is mental-wise, he's less than Rafa. So Rafa knows how to over-smart him and get what he wants. So what I'm doing, I'm explaining to Raphael, like he is a special needs, you have to pray for him. To talk better, you have to pray for him. He can play with you better. I encourage them to play together. Like for example, I give them the reward. If you, if you finish your food, you will play PlayStation, but with David. So they can take not one, one player, two players. You can play hide and seek for 10 minutes, or you can share. We have a programs especially for them to play together. So you can talk to him and explain to him why he's different and, and how to pray for him. Nancy will give a comment. Yeah, because I want to have two people uh -huh. and answer that first. We need to um, take some time to actually talk to the other as a class and educate them. Um, simplify it because they're a preschooler. So if the same three and five years old, you can tell them, you know, remember when you were a baby? You can make a lesson about that one day. You know, make a doll and bring some dolls or whatever. Do you remember when you guys were babies? Did you see your pictures? How old were you? Four. Did you have a birthday party? But when you were first born, did you know how to talk? No. Did you know how to walk? No. You know, but so now you've grown up. You're learning how to talk. Did you have a pretty picture of your? Well, Alex here, you know, the way God made him, he speaks pretty well, but he doesn't know how to talk yet. But you can teach him. You can help him. You can be his friend. You know, that you have to go down to that level for them to understand why he's different, why he's not talking. Remember, I told you he doesn't know how to talk yet? Maybe you can bring this boy and come sit down with him. <laughs> you know, I encourage him, encourage them that way. Um, they're, they're, I mean, they're, yeah, I think that's the best at that age. It's, it's hard for them to explain anymore. They're just like you, they're, you want, they want to be your friend. They're just learning still how to talk and you need to be their friend. Kids and according to what their actual age, <coughs> according to 
that we will discuss in the next yeah, in the next session. Yeah, it depends on what the pain is which one. Yeah, yeah. Which next one session we will talk about this. Hi, Akli. It's, it's only educating them. We are keep educating them. Like it's not good to copy them. Encourage him that they copy you. Teach them how to talk. That's what I'm telling Raphael. It's your job. Huh? I know. It's only 45 minutes. Hmm? Yeah, this is part of our culture. Because also the parents, they don't accept that my child is attending a class with a special needs child. She's saying, I think, what? I know. Like when Lindy go home, I know, but it's speak. part of the culture. It's not the, the, it's not, I don't think the problem is that much big. And the parents are not accepting, like, that my child is attending with a child who's screaming a lot. We don't, يعني, مش, we, they didn't open their hearts to accept, because he has the right also to sit and to attend the class. You got my point? Hmm. Can I say something? Um, I'm just going to say to the special child, I'm going to go through all your questions in your next session. But okay. The, the point from this whole session is for, like, now you are learning that a parent who, um, whether gets diagnosed after three years of being born, or whether they're born blind or born with cerebral palsy, it's a huge <coughs> shock to the pain. Yeah. And they go through a phase like you lost somebody, you lost a loved one. Mm. It's not like you lost the child, but you lost their dream of that perfect child who's going to be a doctor or an engineer or whatever. You know, culturally, that's all they can be. Mm. So, um, so the parents, what Paolo was trying to convey in this session is that the family is goes through a lot, a lot of stress, financial, you know, society being judged and all this stuff. And, oh, sorry. And so what we're trying to convey to you, just as you're going to open your hearts and be more understanding to these families, what they go through, we expect you to go out there and be ambassadors, teach more people around your church. You know, did you know that we have special needs in our church? Did you know that kids with autism are able of, you know, wow, such other skills that you don't know of? You, we need as a culture in the Coptic church to be more understanding, be more open, teach our children too, just like we're going to work on them when they're in preschool. Um, I was saying last weekend um, at our training, the teenagers who come and work with us, they turn out to be better people, you know, because they, when they serve and they see that they can appreciate their life that they think, you know, is not, you know, and they see that just being able to walk is a blessing, you know, because they see somebody their age, he's 17 or 18 too. He has the same wants and needs that you do, but he's trapped in a, well, actually wheelchair is not a trap. <laughs> I shouldn't be talking like this. But at least when they see what they have, they appreciate it more. It's good for the entire church, adults and teenagers and kids to really be open and more understanding and to try not to be afraid of these kids and just include them in as much as we can. With that, I want to say that parents should have expectations that are <laughs> reasonable too, you know. Like they can't have somebody, my, I don't expect my son who bites and, and does this and that to just be, hey, take responsibility. It's my right. I have right to send him to, um, you know, Sunday school, whatever. But the coordinator in your church or whoever is going, you, you have to have someone to talk to and to that's why we are doing like only the mild and moderate in, is in the castles. The severe ones are sitting with us in the room. And the one who needs shadow, we will send shadow with them. So it's, it's not I'm saying like I cannot tell to a severe boy you have to attend the Sunday class. That's not possible. It's not good for them as well. Because, but if the child can, be, can attend, this is the best scenario because this, he will be part of the community. I'm helping him to become better as much as I can. So that's why we have mild, moderate, severe. So it's up to the, the child case and the, the church ar arrangement, okay?
And also, it, they will, if, they, if the, the, the healthy child open his heart, they will teach him how to be kind, how to be humble, how to be nice. So the effect of a special need child is not always negative, you know? No, no, not two autistic. She's talking about the, the healthy ones. The healthy one, the mom is complaining that he is copying one, and he cannot copy from the 45 minutes he's attending in the Sunday class. Hmm. Yes. I will talk to you after. We will discuss it in details because this is a very specific case, yeah. so we can talk about it. I have another question. Uh, the autistic kid takes the class by behavior. Yeah. Case, Not the back. behavior, the why he's different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't have to explain the behavior. Like, like he was uh, uh, hmm? Yeah, yeah. No. Uh, yeah, of course no. Yeah, you should not. He should not be there, and yeah, yeah. Can you repeat the microphone? I'm very shy. I'm very shy. So the We have to be very, very, um, when you talk to the kids, you don't explain, he is autistic boy. He is, no, you should not, you should not label him. You should, ex okay, okay. So you should not label him. You just explain to him, he is not talking as you. So you teach him talk. He is not uh, quiet or as you. He is a bit, he loves to move a bit. But you don't give him a label. Don't don't say he is a statistic boy because even if they are denial or not, you should not talk about it's it's privacy. You should not talk about the child conditions to the others or even to the moms. Or we we discuss his behavior within our um, Sunday class or the activities attending. We, we are not discussing his case. We are not the parents. We are not the family members. It's something beyond our our you know responsibility. So, like, I do something very general with the kids. So I have all the kids stand up and look around, and I will ask the kids who has, like, a curly hair, and they raise their hand if they have a curly hair, who has a green eyes or whatever. And then we ask, we say that we are all different. Mm -hmm. So within the kid being there, I don't have to say that he is different, but we're all different. So I teach the kids, like, we're all, we're all different. Uh, I totally agree with her for um, because what we just spoke about uh, earlier, labeling for um, autism or any special need really hurts them. And even uh, we think at their uh, early age that not, uh, not affected, but they're really, especially for autistic kids, they get more isolated because they... Um, they mostly, um, the kids at that age, especially the normal kids, are very smart. So when we tell them there is kind of delay in the growing, they understand that and they start to label more on that kid. But when we say it in this way, we're trying to avoid labeling because labeling is a big problem in our community, especially because we don't have a big awareness. I, I just want to talk about something you mentioned, 
when you said that uh, the, the kid might behave differently when you or the dad uh, present, I believe um, we need we need to, to clarify that more because if if you as a parent come to me as a servant and say that I will leave my child with you without knowing what what your child uh, reaction might be for for some specific actions, um, it will be too hard to control because I don't know what's what's Th what the result. This should not be the case at all. Like we will never allow. Yeah, that's that's will never be the case. Like you should not take the responsibility of a child completely if you don't know him. For example, if he's coming for the Sunday class and he is attending the first time. If, if the parents didn't mention anything, you should not know anything, and then you will start to notice during the Exactly, the that's, that's why I want to point out. Then you can discuss it with the mom. E exactly, so w we need also to, I, I completely understand, and I've dealt with uh, special needs people a lot, mm -hmm. but um, I'm, I, I need to point out this. Also, because I, I had like uh, an incident uh, that um, a, a boy I just met, and um, the parents wants him to come with us to a festival somewhere uh, in another church. And I know the gang that I, am, I'm, <laughs> I have in, in my car, they are not gonna make it easy for him and I don't know what his reaction might be. I, I completely don't know him, don't know the mom. And she told me, no, I have somewhere to, to go. I'm not gonna uh, go with, uh, with you. I told her that's fine. I, again, that's totally fine. I'm, I'm by myself in the car. You can, you can drive in your, your car behind me till we reach the destination, just in case if something happened, because I don't know the reactions. So we need also to educate the, the parents how to how to explain to the servant. No, I, someone already said something. Very good. So. Um, here, here, I don't want to keep it. I'll say it in Arabic. So, for example, قبل ما نبتدي الفصل الجديد المدرسه الماسكه الفصل بتقول لنا ان الطفل ده مثلا عنده مشكله معينه احنا ليه ما بنف... يعني لازم نقول للبيرنتس ان احنا السنه دي عندنا في الفصل الطفل مثلا عنده سبيشال نيد بحيث ان الام ممكن تكلم ابنها في البيت تقول له ان السنه دي معاك في الفصل طفل سبيشال نيد ازاي تتعامل معاه كده على اساس يعرف يتعامل معاه في الفصل طيب حد 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 ما تتخانقوش استني يا سيدي اكسكيوز مي انتوا مصريين اسمك ايه تاني يا عم مدحت اوكي استني يا سالي 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 She, it's it's a good point. It's a good point, but but we have to be very tactful, okay? Yeah. عارفة أنا وأنت بتقوليها حد يقول اسمك إيه؟ هودا. هودا. وهودا بتقوليها أنا قررت إن أنا ما جيبش ابني الفص. عشان تبي عارفة يعني. لما أنت بتقولي أنا خلي بالك أنا عند يعني أنا عايز أكتب معي. We wanna be in the same page. This is good. How many groups we identified that we need to deal with them now? How many groups we identified to deal with? Concerning this ministry now, tell me, tell, 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 say them, the parents, the servants, the kids, the the members, huh? The other kids, the church, abunas, the two that are going to be here. Okay, okay, okay. Let me go from back. You see how many, you see how many, how many people now we have to deal with? Can, can I, ha can I have you guys? Uh, we had one kid in our Sunday school and when my kids were little, she was like, they give her the look and they did not play with her. So we, um, as a mom, we noticed. So we sat together and we have, we said we have to talk to the kids. 
So we start talking to our kids, and she grew up. She started with them since she was third grade. And right now, they are going to high school. And she starts going to a retreat with them, and she's fine. But we started as a mom, noticing and talking to our kids. OK, let's try to be open to her. Uh, in her birthday, we go and visit, and we start trying to help our kids to accept her. So that's the way. Um, let, me, let me share with you, uh, because I noticed that there, we have, as I said earlier, we could have experience among us. We have families that almost uh, went all the way to write in the back of their child, yeah. autistic. So when they come to church, people are not yelling at them. Do you need to be labeled as this? So I come in with my back, he says, autistic priests. OK? So uh, when we do this, some people will laugh. Some people say, what's going on? Some people say other stuff. Some people look at the parents and says, why don't you take him home somewhere else? We don't want you here. So to the point that parents left churches because of this. We know of people who didn't come to church almost for 30 years now because of their kids. And we, uh, we, we, we are not presenting one model. We're presenting several models. There is a, a church that offers uh, um, a liturgy, specific liturgy, special liturgy, that again is to what the church is teaching. We tell people, don't come. Any liturgy is open. Liturgy is called from theological point of view, it's called Leos, people coming together. We tell people, don't come to this liturgy. And if you come, if you show up when, when this liturgy, I will come to you and says, who are you? What are you doing here? So, and uh, if anything comes out of you, it says, please leave. Because this is their liturgy, okay? This is a model. Another model, extended day. We have the parents who would uh, take a break. We take care of their kids, whether they are sitting in the same premises or they leave somewhere else. Well, go have a nap. Take a nap. Go to the mall. Take your wife and go out. Just relax for a couple of hours. And then we, we take care of the, of the rest. Some other uh, churches, like St. Maurice, they have uh, different types of kids. They have Sunday school. They join to the, the Sunday school. We do have also some of the kids come to Sunday school, but not all of them, because they are not, not necessarily autistic. Could be any other of the, um, uh, of the spectrum of uh, different ability. But then we, it depends. So that's why we are not generalizing anything. We're trying to learn the basics here, and then we're going to leave it to you and with your church and your clergy to decide what model fits you. OK? So did we identify them and the, the people that I, I asked you to identify? So see how many people we have to deal with? Now, how many people? Again. Let's take it from big to small. The congregation. How do we educate our congregation? There are people with uh, uh, special members in their family that they need to be tactfully dealt with. This is one, the congregation. Two, the servants. So uh, there was a nice suggestion that we should have it embedded in our servants' prep to teach about this. Right? Because numbers are increasing now among us. So we need to really care for this. Uh, the clergy, because not every clergy is able to deal with this. There are, there, are, there are clergy, including me, when I hear a voice in the congregation while I'm praying the liturgy. Did you get the face, right? Did you get the face? Okay. What do I do? Then they leave the church. No more embarrassment. We have to deal with it. So the clergy. Also, who else? The siblings. First, the siblings, because I am embarrassed from my sister. I am embarrassed from my son, from my, uh, my uh, uh, brother. I'm embarrassed. I don't want to come. Oh, isn't you the one who has a kid? So uh, some other families. We learned this from people in Egypt, and unfortunately, it is here too. We hide the kids under the bed. Because why? 
because we have one boy and four girls and they are not gonna get married. So under the bed. No one knows that we have a boy. We only have four girls because we don't talk about the boy. I mean, imagine that also the family. Uh, Nancy hinted too, I'm gonna expand it a little bit. I have an autistic child who's not gonna grow like other kids. He's not gonna get graduate from school. He's not gonna get into college. He doesn't play sports. He doesn't get married. I'm not gonna have kids. Uh, our grandchildren, and all of the things that other families go through, I'm not going to go through. So can you imagine my uh, dealing with life here? On the top of this, uh, with any of the spectrum that we were talking about, there are seizures, and seizures are hospital back and forth. Kids in the, uh, autistic kids in the, in, the, in the mall, screaming, pushing himself to the floor, and everybody says, Matrabbayalak. So put yourself there. So when you deal with a family, with a family has a special need, you have this passion to love. Just one thing is going to get us through. That the Lord Jesus Christ said in Matthew 25, as long as you have done this to one of my little brethren, if you care for this, I guarantee you heaven. I'm being for stunt now. I guarantee you heaven if you deal carefully and tactfully dealing with Christ in each one of those. Of course, each one else, but those specifically because they don't know how to express themselves. I told you I'm very happy with what you're saying. Every time I do this, people laugh. I said, why? I'm, I'm getting a message now. Okay? So we need to be very well educated to be able to deal with this. I do, we don't want to be the professional, but if you are professional, this is good. But we want you to be tactful. Human being that created in God's image that can take care of others. Okay? With this, I'm going to give you a break five minutes to uh, be able to go somewhere and come back. Yeah. Of course. Of course. We'll come, we'll come to this, which is, we're going to discuss the next one is going to be about the behavior, which is a very important uh, session that we uh, need to learn a lot of it. So don't leave, yes. If you leave, we're going to get you anyway.